started. My name is Tina McDermott, and I'll just introduce myself briefly, and then I'll tell you what we're making today. All right, my name is Tina McDermott, and if I'm a, oh my goodness gracious, if you are new to me, if this is the very first time that you've been with me, type a one in the chat. If you've been in one of my classes before, go ahead and type a two in the chat. Just want to know if you've been in one of my classes, um, type a one. And if I am completely new to you, type a two in the chat. I know many of you at Maryland National really know me um, and others don't. So I want to know who's new and who is new to me. All right. We got a couple of new people. I'm just, my name is Tina McDermott. For the third time I had to say that. Oh my gosh, my brain's not about me today, but it's all good. I am a speaker. I am a weight loss coach, and I call myself the lazy inspirational chef. And this is my love. This is my passion. And there's no place that I'd rather be than here teaching you how you can live a life that's full of vibrancy, full of health, and full of just freedom to live your life free of disease, free of of DIEs because who wants to die it? We want to live it. If you want to live it, type live it in the chat. Go ahead and type live it in the chat. If you want to live it and to heck with all of those capital D, capital I, capital E, small T's, put live it in the chat box. There you go. So nice to see you guys. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so, so much. So that's a little bit about me. I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I love it, love it, love it. Let me tell you what we're going to make today, and maybe my tongue won't be so tight then. <laughs> All right, we are going to make this these delicious, tempting tuna burgers with an olive tapenade. Wow, as well as paleo buns, because we want to be eating food that is really good for our tummy, right? Really good for our, our gut, for gut health, and processed flours are really harsh on your gut, especially gluten. And I'll talk all about that. And then we're going to make paleo buns where I talked about that. And then we're gonna do a tempting kale salad. Yep, we're going to do some massaging of our kale. And then finally, I'm going to make some parfaits because we need to have quick foods in our refrigerator. That's good for breakfast, for lunch, for snacks or whatever we want it for, right? Okay, so, oh good, I got a bunch of you going saying live it, fantastic. Let's get started. We are going to start with our paleo buns. Why? Because I wanna get them in the oven and I want them to finish cooking before our class is over. So let's get started with our paleo buns. You know, I wanna know from my audience, is there anyone in my audience that is gluten-free? If you're gluten-free, type gluten-free in the chat. Go ahead and type gluten-free in the chat. Type gluten-free in the chat if you are gluten-free. If you are not gluten-free but are curious about it, type a one in the chat. If you are not gluten-free and never gonna be gluten-free because you could care less, type a two in the chat. Kinda wanna know who you are, okay, good. All right, now let me tell you, let's get started with our paleo buns and by the way, through this whole cooking class, if you have any questions for me when it comes to nutrition, type them in the chat. I'll answer them. I'll be here for you. And, you know, so now I don't remember what was the one. One is you're gluten-free, but you're curious, right? And that's what it was. All right. Um, this is my base for the gluten-free paleo muffins. No, not muffins. They're buns. They're, they're good. They're like bread, but they're they're wonderful. I love them. I've been eating them for breakfast and for dinner and for lunch. I love them. Now, what I did here is I got some almond flour. I always store my almond flour in the refrigerator because it can go rancid really quickly. So this is my container with my almond flour that I get from Aldi's. Now, if you've cooked with almond flour, type almond flour in the chat. I want to know who, who my audience is, what's going on with y'all. If, if almond flour is like, yeah, I know almond flour. Or if this is new to you, let me know that too. So almond flour is just almonds all ground up. And this white stuff over here is tapioca flour, which is made from the cassava plant. There is absolutely no gluten in it and it really helps with forming the muffins. Over here, what I did is I got my flax seeds, my flax seeds, always buy them whole. 
Do not buy them already ground, okay? Buy them whole and you get your little coffee grinder and you grind them yourself and then store them in the freezer if you're not gonna use them right away. If you eat them whole, you, you eliminate them whole and you won't get the benefits of them. But if you buy them already ground, then they're rancid. So buy them whole, grind them yourself. I hope you guys get that, okay? Now, the other thing I have baking soda, baking powder to give it a little bit of a rise and some sea salt. What am I missing? That's it. That's all I have with my flour. So I'm just going to mix my flours all together. And the flax seeds, oh, flax seeds are so amazing for your brain. When we talk about brain health, the entire menu that I designed today was all about how to have a healthier brain. And flax seeds are full of what's called an ALA fatty acid that your body then converts to a DHA fatty acid, which is wonderful for brain health. Omega-3, you've heard of omega-3s, that's the DHA is in omega-3s. And that's what the flax seeds are. Um, there again, remember it's a DH, it's an ALA fatty acid. Our body and our livers have to convert it to the DHA. So there's a little work our bodies have to do. That's why I love salmon or tuna because there's a little less work that has to happen with the salmon and the tuna in your body. Now I'm going to make a little hole in the middle of my flour. I could do this on a cutting board, you know, on a big pasta board, but a bowl is a little easier. So we're going to do it in a bowl. And now it's time to measure. Oh my gosh. If anyone knows me, I call myself the lazy inspirational chef. I don't like to measure. But when it comes to baking, it's kind of important to measure. So we're going to measure. We're going to measure. It pains me. I'm telling you. We're going to do, I have to remember it, how much we need some warm water. And it's two thirds a cup warm water. I boiled this water earlier and a long time ago. So it's, it's warm. You don't want it. You could just get it from the faucet as well, but we want two thirds and my eyes are failing me. There we go. Two thirds of some warm water. You see, it's not piping hot. It's just warm. Put my finger in it. Not a problem. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of some avocado oil. Feel free to use coconut oil, grapeseed oil. Um, I found also a coconut oil that's butter flavored that is really, really good. Um, and if you want to use real butter, oh my gosh, I should have a t-shirt. I eat real butter. Eat real butter. It's good for you the real stuff, none of that margarine, okay? Because that margarine is not good for your brain. It's full of hydrogenated trans fatty acids, which are terrible for you. So who eats, who likes real butter? Put real butter in the chat. If you are a real butter person, put real butter in that chat box. Put real butter in that chat box. If you are a real butter person, if you're real butter, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, and I don't have a tablespoon, but there are four teaspoons in a tablespoon. So we will do four teaspoons here. This actually helps with the leavening process, the apple cider vinegar. There we go. Our teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, real butter. It smells different too. Yes, it smells different. It tastes different. It is different. It's wonderful. It's good for you. And we're going to do about a tablespoon of raw honey. Now, this is where I'm going to be my rebel self and not measure. Okay, <laughs> that's about a tablespoon. All right, a little bit more. That gives it a pinch of sweetness, which is really nice. Now we're going to do two eggs at room temperature. Now, what if I poured the egg, I cracked the eggs and I put them right into that water mixture? What if I did that and then the eggs weren't good? What would happen? I would ruin all of that I, I would have to throw out that oil, that apple cider vinegar and start all over again. So what I'm gonna do is crack an egg into a separate little bowl. And remember though, that happy chickens like happy eggs. So try to get organic cage-free eggs, free roaming, even better. If there's a farm anywhere near you, get it from the farm, okay? So there's your egg. Remember, I'm lazy. The recipe tells you to put the eggs in later. I just put it right in with, all of the liquid, it doesn't bother me at all. 
you know it's not a good egg if it's really runny. And also, you also want to do room temperature eggs for this. Don't do cold eggs, okay? Don't do cold eggs when you're baking breads and things, okay? Especially this paleo bread. So I'm just going to add that in there, and I'm just going to work it through. You know, those eggs need to be whipped a little bit. So I'm going to use my egg beater. Actually, this is not an egg beater. What is this called? I do believe it. I cannot remember the name of what this is. Whisk. That's what it is, a whisk. Sometimes I remember the words in Italian, but I don't remember them in English. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? Okay. So I'm going to show you my mixture. See how easy that was to mix that up. Put my whisk in the sink. Now that I can remember what it's called, a whisk. Hey, and Tina, what is paleo? What does that mean? What's paleo oh, bread? Paleo. The, the, okay. Paleo is basically eating the way Mother Nature taught us to eat. Okay. Back to nature whole foods. The less processed things are, the better they are for you. Paleo eats lots and lots of vegetables, anything that comes from the earth, including um, animal protein. So if it walks, flies, swims, or grows, it's good for you. Paleo does not do grains or beans, and it does not do dairy either. So if something is paleo, you can be rest assured that it doesn't have gluten, and it doesn't have beans and it doesn't or any kind of grains and it doesn't have dairy okay so um for the most part i am i am paleo but i don't like to pit myself into any kind of um corner on anything because i do like i, I like a little dairy i like a little butter in my life so i don't want to say oh i'm paleo no but these are paleo buns um great question great great question and is paleo no. considered low carb so sorry what do you say about? No, questions are, I like questions. Please ask as many questions as you can. My eyes are failing me, so I can't always see what those things are saying, what you guys are saying over there. Sometimes I can. Uh, is Paleo is not necessarily low carb. Uh, and, and I don't do any DIEs. I want you to remember that. Even the paleo is a DIE, so I don't do any of those. So it's not necessarily low carb because um, there are some carbohydrates in almonds. There are some carbohydrates in flax seeds. There are tons of carbohydrates in vegetables. So I don't want you to ever think that carbohydrates are bad for you. It's mostly the refined carbohydrates that are bad for you. The more processed they are, the worse they are for you. Okay. So now let's get these in the oven. Did I answer your questions? I hope so. I think somebody asked me, what is the word in Italian? And now I can't even remember the word in Italian. You can get a big spoon and do this, or you can do it my lazy way. I got a big old cookie scoop, the big kind, and I'm just going to plop it on my parchment paper. Word to the wise, if a recipe calls for parchment paper, use it. It will make a difference in your recipe. Okay, you want to space these apart. You can make them big, you can make them sloppy, you can make them small, however you want to make them. But if you make them smaller than this big cookie scoop size, which is like a big tablespoon, you're probably gonna have to cook it for a little bit less, okay? And next we're gonna put some sesame seeds on top. Let me dish these out for now. And this will make two trays like this, this batch. And I freeze them. When I'm done, I put them in the freezer and well, I eat what I want that day, but because they have eggs and stuff in it, you don't want to sit, you, these do not sit on the counter, okay? These are not the kind of buns that you sit on the counter, like, uh, like regular bread that has preservatives in it. There's no preservatives in this. So either put it in the refrigerator for what you're gonna eat for the week or freeze them. I freeze them in a freezer baggie, pull it out, slice it open, put it right in the toaster oven, it is Yum, 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 yum. All right, let's put that aside. And let's see here. Next, sesame seeds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get an egg. I only want the egg white. Oh, every time I got the yolk in there. Darn it, that's okay. 
and I got a shell in there. Who knows how to get rid of a shell inside the eggs? Like attracts like. So in order to get the shell out, don't try with your finger, get the other piece of the shell and dig in there and you will easily, <laughs> hopefully, easily get the other part of the shell, which is still not coming up. There it is. I gotcha. Okay, so that is egg is going to the dog. The yolk is going to the dog, the egg white. I'm gonna put a little smidgen of water in there, just a smidgen of water. And just gonna whisk that up and I'm gonna put this based the top of the muffins. I might smash them down just a little by putting this on there and that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. There we go. Once you make this batch, it's so easy to make. I'm telling you, having them in the freezer has been such a delight for me because I won't do, I don't do gluten because there is a direct connection between gluten and brain health and or gut and brain health. Gluten will, it destroys, all right, let me put it this way. When you mix flour and water, do you remember when we were kids and we, we, we played and we mixed flour and water? What did you get when you mixed flour and water? What did you get when you mixed flour and water? Somebody tell me in the chat. What did you get when you mix uh, flour with water? You got this paste, right? You remember the paste? Yeah, thank you. Good, 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 good. Well, what happens when you eat the gluten it literally goes through your intestines like paste. And the easiest way that I can describe it to you is it goes through the intestines and inside your intestines are like 20, your small intestines are 21 some feet tall, about an inch and a half in diameter. And inside I've got these microvilli and villi tentacle-like structures that absorb all of the, the nutrients and push all of the nutrients into the bloodstream on the outside of the intestines in the, what's called the interstitial fluid. And if the intestines, if, the, if you eat paste, the paste breaks off these villi and also permeates the cell wall, the damaged cell wall of the intestines and goes right into the interstitial fluid and right into the bloodstream. It's called auto intoxication also known as leaky gut syndrome. And then your lymphatic system has to work triply hard to get all of those toxins out of your body, causing weight gain, causing fatigue, causing toxin accumulation in your body. So that's the reason why we don't wanna be eating gluten. And that's one of many, many, many reasons, okay? And that also has a direct connection to the brain. So if you want a, a healthy functioning uh, clear brain, then you want to avoid glutinous foods. Ready for the oven? 20 minutes. 20 minute timer, Katie? Katie? Um, Katie. Caitlin. I don't know what happened to my brain today. Oh my gosh. All right. 20 minute timer. And then we're going to go on to our tuna burgers. Ready for our tuna burgers? Yep. Yeah, it makes paste. Good. All right, let's do some, make some tuna burgers. You guys ready for some tuna burgers? Put tuna in the chat if you want some tuna burgers. Now, there's a couple of things I want to tell you about tuna burgers. Let's talk about a couple of things about tuna in general. I'm going to turn my little fry pan on. Oh, I got to plug it in. My cat likes to come up here and sometimes she attempts to chew the cord. So I have to not plug it in until the last minute, but that's all good. Okay, let's get that going. And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in the pan. And it, whoop, loud noise, so sorry. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, wonderful for you. Okay, let's talk about tuna fish. The tuna fish that I used today, it's what I had, is the bumblebee in water. Perfectly fine. You could get the white tuna fish. You can get salmon in a can. Drain out all the water if it came in water. 
Better yet, if you can find some tuna in olive oil and check the ingredients to make sure it actually says olive oil, then you're going to get the tuna fish in olive oil. You're probably looking at this going, I've never seen that tuna fish before. This is a tuna fish that I get from Italy. And the last time my parents went, I had them fill their suitcase up with this tuna fish because I love it, love it, love it. It's my favorite in the whole wide world. And it's fished by um, fishing poles. It's fished by, it's pole caught is what you say. And it's in this wonderful extra virgin olive oil that I just adore. And we haven't been going to Italy for a long time. So I'm savoring this, my last can of tuna fish. So I opened up my can of tuna. I drained out the water already because I didn't want to have to wash my hands when I was with you. And I, I wasn't even precise about it. It doesn't matter. There's some tuna in there and off we go. If you had the tuna with the oil in it, don't dump the oil. Add it to these tuna burgers or add it to a salad. Sometimes I'll just dump that whole can right onto lettuce and we're good to go. Okay. So I got a little olive oil in there. Let me check my ingredients, make sure I get everything going. I know I'm gonna do some coconut flour. This recipe calls for coconut flour, not almond flour. The coconut flour helps to form the patties and it absorbs some of the egg as well. So we're gonna do three tablespoons of coconut flour. And you're like, Tina, what are you doing there with a little strainer? Simple. Coconut flour tends to get a little lumpy dumpy and we don't want lumpy dumps in our tuna fish. So it takes what, a couple more seconds to pass the coconut flour through a strainer and then you're not gonna get any big lumps. If you do cook with coconut flour, then make sure that you store this in the refrigerator. Just like I store my coconut, my almond flour in the refrigerator, any kind of nuts, I don't even store them in the cabinets. They get stored in the freezer unless I'm about to eat them, okay? Um, but yeah, you wanna store these in the refrigerator. Now this one is not sealing. I don't know why it doesn't wanna seal. Okay. I don't want that to spill all over my counter so I will just clip it and put it right there, okay. Next, what do we have going on in here? We've got coconut flour, we've got olive oil. We're gonna put some onions in there. So we're gonna do some green onions. And you know, I always say with recipes, the world is your oyster, okay? If you don't have green onions, I made this recipe last week and I didn't have any of these scallions, green onions, go ahead and use a regular onion. It really doesn't matter. You know, but the onion flavor is really nice in these burgers. Really, really nice. And, and again, it's not gonna make a difference whether I use scallions or regular onions. If you notice, I'm throwing my scraps over there. That is my compost pile because I like to compost all of my scraps. Who here composts? Put compost in the chat if you compost. Put compost in the chat if you compost. I'm just getting rid of some other things. Store coconut and almond flour in the fridge. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Olive oil, if it's already in there, you don't need to add it. Oh, Caitlin, you're just, uh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Thank you for repeating all of that, Caitlin. I appreciate that. Caitlin is my assistant today and almost every time I do a cooking class. I don't know how I could do these without you, Caitlin. Okay, so easy. Now, who wants to know knife skills? Anybody want to learn some knife skills? Put knife skills in the chat. If you don't, I'm just going to keep chopping. If you want knife skills, put knife skills in the chat. Okay, good, good. So one person composts, I love it, I love it, good. And yeah, some knife skills, you wanna learn some knife skills, good. It's one of my favorite things to teach, yay. Okay, here's our knife. You wanna get a knife that the, the handle, the, the, the metal part, I like stainless steel, goes all the way through, it's called a tang. Okay, you see this metal piece? This actually came from um, uh, Tupperware. This was a, a whole set that I got from Tupperware and they are probably the best knives I've ever gotten uh, because the tang goes all the way through. The handle is on this one rubber so it doesn't slip very much. If you look at my other knife, I love this chef not, chef's knife, but the handle, 
isn't, uh, it can slip a little bit easier, but I'm gonna teach you how to use a knife without having it slip anyway. Who can finish this sentence? A dull knife is a, who can finish this sentence? A dull knife is a, a dull knife is a, anybody know what that, a dull knife is a useless knife. <laughs> That's the first time I've gotten that. A dull knife is a dangerous knife. So get your knives sharpened, get your knife sharpened. This knife needs sharpenings. That's why I'm not using it today. It is going to get sharpened by my dad next week when I go and see him. But get your knives sharpened and using wooden cutting boards will help them stay sharpened longer. And also storing them. I have a bamboo um, storage nest in here where they store, they don't store them on their sides because you don't want other knives to bang up against them or anything because that will dull it as well or nick it and you don't want any of that. Okay, back to knife skills. Number one, stainless steel, fantastic. Most people like to grip a knife like so, or even like so, right? But lock, watch what happens. The knife can easily, a little less with the rubber handle, but slip out and cut you. We don't, we love our fingers. I love our fingers. I love your fingers. Don't cut them, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put three fingers on the handle. One finger, your index finger, on the blade, the side of the blade, the back of that middle finger up against the back of the blade, okay? The thumb on the other side. So now you've got a grip on your knife and it's not going to slip out. Wonderful, let's save the fingers, okay? Somebody type in the chat, save the fingers, save the fingers. And the other thing you wanna do is move your fingers like so, crunch them in like so, so that they don't they're not in the way, right? They're not in the way. So you want to crunch them in like so. And now I don't like to use this particular method. Uh, the back of the blade against the back of the, the fingers here. And then you just move the fingers back as they're guided against the back of the fingers. I like my fingers further back. That's just me, even though I was taught to do it the other way. Actually, if you really want to know, I will tell you, I was taught by... I never went to culinary school, although I studied online uh, some things, but I went to the school of Velia and Velia is my mom. My mom is off the boat Italian and she taught me how to cook literally with just a fork and a knife. We never had any kind of fancy dancy tools in the kitchen growing up. So we learned using simple things. Also never pick up your vegetables, your chopped vegetables, with your knife for two reasons. Number one, it dulls the blade. Number two, you can easily cut yourself. Even if you use the back of the blade, you see your thumb can still touch that blade. We don't want that. So I have this other little picker upper thing that will help me pick up and throw into my tuna fish. Good, nice skills. You guys good, happy about that? Makes me happy. I got to teach you knife skills. Let's see what else we're going to put in here. We're going to put some black pepper. If you don't already have a pepper grinder, oh my gosh, it's the best kitchen investment you will ever make better than a knife. No, the knife is important too, but we're going to put some freshly black, ground black pepper. It is, the flavor profile is astounding. So much better than already ground black pepper. Black pepper that's already ground is it's kind of the same thing as buying the whole almonds and grinding them yourself uh, or the whole flax seeds and grinding them yourself versus buying the flax seeds already ground, kind of on the rancid side already. So black pepper, what else are we gonna put in here? We're gonna put, we did the coconut flour, we're gonna put a half a teaspoon of sea salt. Now, why do we want a half a teaspoon? Why do we want sea salt versus the regular table salt? Does anybody know why do we want sea salt versus table salt? Does anybody know? Anybody, anybody know? If you don't know, let me know. If you know, if you don't know, put a two in the chat. If you don't know, put a two in the chat. If you know, let me know. Okay. We want sea salt because sea salt is full of minerals. 78 plus minerals are in sea salt. 
different kinds of sea salt. I like the pink Himalayan. There's Murray River. There's Malden sea salt. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of sea salts. But you want a good sea salt because of the minerals. And it's the minerals that actually open up your cells and allow your body to get hydrated. Without minerals, you will die. It's that simple. If you drink distilled water, for example, you will die. You can't survive on distilled water because there's nothing in it. Okay. So get yourself some good sea salt and throw away all of that sodium chloride. As a matter of fact, I keep it only to kill the weeds. Seriously, salt kills the weeds. So that's what I put in my weeds is salt to kill anything or tree trunks or things that need to be gone in my yard. That's the only time I buy sodium chloride. Otherwise, it's just not good for you. It raises your blood pressure. We can't have that. Next, we're going to put a little bit, about a tablespoon of lemon juice. I don't want this too watery, so I didn't measure, but that's about a tablespoon, about a tablespoon. Now, we can put some, all right, you tell me, what you tell me, should I put garlic powder or fresh garlic in my tuna burgers? Garlic powder or fresh garlic, what should I do? Tell me, somebody tell me. Garlic powder or fresh garlic in my tuna burgers? I'm putting a little oregano in there too. It's about a teaspoon, maybe more, who knows. By the way, if you're a vegetarian and you don't wanna do a tuna burger, drain a can of beans and you can make this with a can of beans. Everything else should be about the same, okay? Should I do fresh? Minced, pow oh, some people put powdered in there. Well, I'm just gonna tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use fresh. I'm gonna use my garlic press and we're going to use fresh garlic. Why? Because garlic is anti-inflammatory. It is really good to help boost your immune system. It's antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. You need garlic these days and you need to feed it with, to everybody around you too so that everybody smells like garlic, right? And nobody's like, oh, you smell like garlic. Um, anyhow, garlic is good for you. So eat your garlic, so fresh you're not going to get, you're going to get some flavor with the powdered garlic. And I use it sometimes, but I really want to boost my immune system and boost the immune system of my family. So I'm going to put some fresh garlic and look, you saw how easy it is to do garlic, put it in the little garlic press. No big deal. I forgot the Dijon mustard. That's what I forgot. Give me a second. Let me go get that out of my fridge. Dijon mustard. All right. I almost dropped my egg. Three tablespoons of some Dijon mustard. One, two, don't laugh. Three. <laughs> yes, that's how I measure. I'm a mess. That's why my mama taught me. It's the way my mama taught me. I'm going to put a couple eggs. I forgot to do this in another little container, but oh well. But I'm risking it, right? If that was a bad egg, I'm risking all my ingredients. I should have put it in a separate container, right? Definitely. Okay, let's see if I got everything in here. And then tuna, check. Green onions, check. Coconut flour, check. Black pepper, sea salt, garlic, oregano, eggs, Dijon, lemon juice, olive oil. I'll put that in first. And a little bit more for frying. My, my pan is nice and hot. I have my wonderful cast iron skillet. And now I'm going to use two forks like so. And I'm going to whip this all together. Why two forks? It helps you to mash everything together a little more effectively, wider surface area. Now, something with coconut flour, coconut flour absorbs a lot. It's highly absorbent. And we really wanna let this sit for a minute before we make our patties. Also, what I am noticing, even though it's going to be a little more, um, thicker as I let it sit for a moment or two, I notice that it's really wet. And it's likely because I used um, a different tuna than I did the other time. And I probably didn't get all the water out. I was probably a little hasty trying to get started for the class, but it's not a problem. There is a solution to that. There's always a solution in my kitchen. And that is a little bit more coconut flour, right? Just put a little bit more flour we're gonna start with one tablespoon and maybe do two tablespoons. We'll see. Uh-oh, I need that. Push it through. 
Yeah, don't get lazy on the coconut flour and passing it through because you see this time, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a couple of chunks in there and they don't always dissolve and you end up biting into a big chunk of coconut flour and hmm, who wants that? Okay, so already I can tell, not with the new flour, but the old flour, the one that was already in there has thickened up my burgers, my tuna burgers. Let me tell you, everyone who has eaten my tuna burgers loves them. This is a nice twist to tuna salad. It's a nice twist to tuna salad. And you can serve them, because I, I, they stay in your fridge for a good five days. You can serve them cold once they're made, or you can serve them um, warmed up. I just warm them up in the toaster oven. I really try hard not to use their microwave oven because it destroys a lot of the active enzymes in foods and we need our enzymes. Um, so four minutes, what it takes one minute in the microwave takes four minutes in the toaster oven. Okay, so my pan is sizzling hot and it's ready to go. So we're gonna make our burgers and then we're gonna go and make that olive tapenade. Oh my, I'm taking a lot of time today to do everything, but that's okay. That's all right. Burger number one, this makes four or five burgers, depending on how many you want to make. If you wanna make them small, if you wanna make them big, if you wanna make them oblong, if you wanna make them round, totally up to you. And if you feel like you need a little bit more flour in your hands, grab up a little bit more of the coconut flour but they're fine. They're a little on the wet side. They're perfect. I don't like them too dry when I eat them. So there we go. Yep, this one made five. I must have made them a little on the small side today. It's all good. All good. How much time do we have on those buns in the oven? Caitlin? You have about two and a half minutes. All right, I smell them. I smell them. Can you wash my hands? We are going to make a quick olive tapenade. I need a four minute timer, please, Miss Caitlin. And we're going to quickly make an olive tapenade because it is quick to make an olive tapenade. Don't buy it. It's so quick to make it. Easy, easy, peasy, easy, peasy. Get your food processor out. Get yourself a can of Kalamata olives or today I have these Greek olives that have garlic stuffed in them. So I don't have to add any more garlic. Got the garlic already stuffed. I drained them earlier, but now they don't want to come out of my bottle or my jar. I use a little bit of muscle there, didn't I? Okay, got our olives in there. And then we're gonna do, we don't need the fresh garlic. We need two tablespoons of fresh lemon, which I have some lemon right here that I squeezed earlier. That was probably only one tablespoon though. So let's make our olive tapenade really yummy and put a little bit more lemon in it. If you like lemon, put lemon in the chat. I love lemons, freshly squeezed lemons. Don't buy them in the store. Don't buy the jarred lemon juice. It has been pasteurized just like the garlic in the jar has been pasteurized in the powdered garlic. High, high, high heat destroys all the active enzymes. You want fresh lemon juice. It is just, even the flavor profile is so good. It doesn't have preservatives in it. it was preserved by mother nature. See the skin? That was mother nature's job. Okay, now we're gonna do some freshly ground black pepper. Oh, capers, I forgot to get capers out of the fridge. Let me go get my capers. I like pepper, so I'm gonna keep putting pepper in. Capers, capers, capers are not even in the olive family but they have this wonderful, wonderful punch of a flavor that I highly recommend that you put them in your tapenade. 
probably so need <clears throat> your timer for your paleo buns is going off. Really? I smell them. I know that they're done. I can smell them, smell them, smell them. I need about a tablespoon of capers. Don't laugh. That was two heaping teaspoons. It's okay. It's okay. Let me get those buns out of the oven. <clears throat> look how gorgeous they are. We're going to let them cool off before I slice one open for you, but look how pretty. Oh, I love food. I love those buns fresh out of the oven. Nothing like it. Nothing in the world like it. All right, back to the tapenade. We've got our capers. We've got our olive. Well, we didn't put olive oil in there yet. So throw in our olive oil. And then we're going to put in some fresh parsley. Store your parsley in water. You can keep it on the countertop because it's really pretty addition to your countertop. Or you can store it right in the refrigerator like this because it will last a lot longer with being in the water, okay? Now I could use the stems, but it's just a little bit too much stem for me. So I'm just gonna take some of those stems off and, hmm. Never wash your parsley before you're gonna use it. I mean, yeah, never wash your parsley ahead of time. Wash it right before you're gonna use it, it will last longer because if I'd have washed that parsley when I first got it, the water will introduce other bacteria and stuff and it will go bad quicker. So you don't wanna do that. So you wash it right before you're gonna use it. Okay, that and goes with all of your vegetables. Go ahead and check your tuna burgers as well. Really, is that what I gotta do? All right, tuna burgers. Nope. That one was ready. That one was ready. That one was not ready, but that's okay. Another four minute time out, please. Turn that up just a little bit. Okay, what do we have in here? We've got it all, all of our ingredients, pepper, parsley, olive oil, capers, lemon, garlic olives, one of the most important uh, ingredients to a tapenade. And you're just gonna pulse it. See how I'm pulsing? Don't just turn it on and leave. Don't ever leave your appliances. Pulse, 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 okay? I'm gonna push down the sides real quick. This is a wonderful topping to these tuna burgers. And just to eat with a spoon, wonderful. Okay, there we have it, it is done. I will store this in a glass container and it will store in my refrigerator for several weeks. Just make sure there's olive oil on the top of it and it'll store for a while, but this will not last very long in my house. I will eat this with a spoon and I will put it on all of my dinners. I will put it on my paleo buns and I will eat that. It is that good. It is that good. Okay, we're gonna put our turkey burgers together, tuna burgers, not turkey burgers, in just a minute, but as I am waiting on the turkey tuna burgers, tuna burgers to finish, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about kale. Who here loves kale? Put kale in the chat if you love kale. If you love kale, put kale in the chat. Kale is one of those foods that is so important for you to be eating on a normal basis. It really is very important for you to be eating on a normal basis. And I wanna show you how you can get more kale into your life. You can either cut it up and saute it in a pan or eat it raw. Eating it raw, you're going to get all of the nutrition from that. And what I do with the adult kale is I strip the, leaf, the, the stems off of it. These are hard to chew. So I throw them into smoothies or into stir fries. And then I'm gonna get the leaves and stack one leaf on top of the other 
and then I'm going to slice them. Now I made, I had done these the other day and stored them in one of my little blue bags. These are keep it fresh bags that keep my produce so fresh for weeks on end. So this is kale that I stripped the other day and I'm just going to stack the leaves. I've already taken the stems off, just stack the leaves one on top of the other. And now I'm gonna give it a roll. Kaylin, do you have another timer on the other side of those um, tuna burgers? Yeah, you have one minute. Okay, good, 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 good. Do you see how I just grabbed a hold of them and I rolled them? Okay, you have a love-hate relationship with kale. Try baby kale. If you've never tried kale before, or if you hate kale, you're like, ugh. Try baby kale. The baby kale has all of the nutrition as a, of adult kale. Now on this one, because I have to hold it all together, just be very careful of your beautiful fingers. Also, don't chop straight down with your knife. Use your whole knife. Use your whole knife. Use more muscles, okay? I'm chopping in thin strips, and now I'm going to go this way as well. There we go. Let's put that all into a bowl. And... Adult kale has a, um, a hard cellulose outer layer that we need to break it down. And we're gonna break it down by putting a little elbow grease into it. We're gonna massage it. I put a little olive oil in there. And where are we on the tuna burgers? Just, just, just went off, so check them. Yeah, because I don't wanna get my hands massaging dirty and then not working well. I mean, not, not being able to flip them if I needed to. Okay, the one, now remember with the tuna burgers, the tuna's already cooked, right, from the can. The only thing that really needs to cook is the egg. The only thing that needs to cook is the egg. The tuna burgers on the outside are not cooked as well, so they need to go for another four minutes. The one in the middle is ready. So I am going to grab one of my buns. Slice it in half. Look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna put my turkey burger in the tuna burger. Why do I keep calling it a turkey burger? With a little olive tamponade. And there you have it. There you have it. Maybe it needs a little slice of tomato and we're good to go. Look how pretty that is. Back to our kale. I want to make sure we have enough time so I can show you the kale salad. You have to get in there. Who says you don't use muscles in the kitchen? You do. Get in there and massage the kale. It helps to break down the cellulose, the cellulose layer so it's easier for you to chew. Okay, so you're going to massage it for a minute, two minutes, however long you feel like massaging your kale high maintenance, I know, but if you get the baby kale, it's not so high maintenance. It's not so high maintenance, okay? I'm gonna wash my hands again. Yes, constantly washing my hands while in the kitchen. Now for this salad, what I like to do on this salad, I like to pour in just a dash of balsamic, balsamic vinegar. My husband loves to drink this stuff. I don't. So I just throw a dash in there and I'm going to put a little bit of lime juice. Who sees my lemon squeezer thing? Here it is. The lime is in the same family as lemons, but it's got this pizzazz. Mm, good word for lime. It's got this punch to it that is just lovely in this particular salad. So we're going to put a little bit of lime juice in there. I already put the salt and now I'm going to put some arugula and I had no, here it is. So I have this arugula spinach mix. I want you to remember the darker, the greener, the leafier, the vegetable, the better it is for your brain. Because again, like the flaxseed, it has an ALA fatty acid in it that is uh, brain health, right? The ALA turns into a DHA and that is the omega-3 that is really good for your brain. So I'm going to mix the kale with a little bit of spinach, a little bit of arugula, and there we have it. And this will be my side salad with my tuna burger. How easy, how easy is that? How lovely is that? Fantastic.
I cannot express to you how important it is for you to be eating 10 to 12 cups of vegetables a day, mostly green leafy vegetables, mostly green leafy vegetables. Okay. Okay. I have to get on to my next class today, which is all about brain health. That's what today's all about brain health. And a bit before we go, what have you found most valuable about our time together today? What have you found most valuable about our time together today? Like, what is that one thing that you're just going to take away and say, yes, I got that. I got that. I'm going to start making paleo buns. I'm going to start making tuna burgers. I'm going to start making kale salads. What is that one thing that you are going to take away and say, yes, I got that today? Uh, yeah, you made it seem simple. Good, good. And Caitlin, she's going to put in the chat a link to my joyful gut uh, guide. So you have the prep for another employee health. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It has been my honor. It has been my pleasure. Thank you so much for being here today. And I'll be back tomorrow for another session. Not cooking. We're doing something else tomorrow. All right. Have a very good day. Bye for now, everyone. Namaste. Bye for now.